Take your right hand, put on your head. Say, Father, Father open, my mouth open my mouth so that I can understand the scripture. Can understand the scripture. In the name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. Amen. Elohim, Adonai, Eshadai. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Father, open my eyes so that I may see wonderful things in your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus spent some couple of years with his disciples. Their man were close. He died, he rose again, he opened up their mind so that they can understand the scripture. These are the same scripture that has been in your Bible for many, many years. You read them. The problem is the remark in the word that you read, the revelation of the word that you read. That is why anytime somebody asks you a question, do you not tell them, I don't know, try to learn something there. If they say to you, do you know, you say, I know, then uh, there is nothing you will learn. Genesis chapter 1, verse 10. God called the dry ground land. And the gather water he called sea. And God saw that it was good. This is the first time God called the dry ground land. For the very first time, God is creating even the water. And God saw that it was good. Raise your voice. Say this with me loud and clear. Father, open my eyes. Father, open my eyes. So that I may see good things that you have put around me. In the name of Jesus, house of Nazareth. There are people who, if they are wanting to criticize everything around them, they will never see good. God saw that the land was good. God saw that the water was good. That is why Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground. If the land was not good, if the ground was not good, God will never create you out of the dust. He breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and the man became a living being. We are not coming from something that was bad or evil. Everything mankind do is connected to the ground. The ground will be under a case because of what they do on the ground. The land can be under generational cases. When you've seen generational cases in your family, don't be quick to blame, to blame your family. Check the land where you are living. Check where you are setting your feet. Check where you are sleeping. Before you begin to blame generational cases in your bloodline, in your family, check the ground where you are living. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not a fool that say, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. When you look at the land, you will never see symptom of sickness on the land, on the ground. But when you are running your business, you will discover that there are opposition, there are forces opposing your business. And those forces, as long as they are controlling the land, there is nothing your hand will do that will be prosperous. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, Generational cases will break in the love of everyone that has humbled himself before the Lord. Not a proud person. A proud person continue with his affliction, with his generational cases. It will continue because he's proud. He's not prepared to sit and learn. 
Only Jesus said, come to me, all you are weary and bed, and I will give you rest. And before Jesus gives you rest, you need to learn from him. From you, because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 17, you will discover that when God cursed Adam, he said, curse is the ground because of you. God could say, Abraham, I curse you. He did not curse Abraham. God cursed the ground. God cursed what? God cursed what? God cursed the ground. Because you listened to your wife and ate food from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. This is the ground because of you. Through hard work, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. How many days? All the days of his life, you will eat food. You will eat food through hard work. Whether you like it or not, you can call that one generational cases. Up until today, everybody work hard to put food on the table, to put bread on the table. You will stand up on your feet right where you are. You will raise your voice. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Break. Break. The generational cases. On the ground of my property. I'm not telling you. Uh huh. Break it in your house. Break it in your business. Break in the name of Jesus Christ of Men. Break the generational curses in the ground of your property. Break the generational curses. Where you are running your business, blood of Jesus, break the generational curses. Rabo Sokoro Maria Kaba. Rabo Soko Maria Kaba Sakama. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please, you may sit down. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis chapter 4, verse 10. When God cursed Cain, he said, when you work the ground, it will be unproductive. When God cursed Cain, he did not say, Cain, I curse you. Look the things that will happen. The Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cry out to me from the ground. Hmm? Verse 11. Now you are under a case and driven from the ground, which opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Twelve. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. It will never be productive. You will be restless wanderers on the earth. Check your life. Per year, how many times you change house to house from one place to another? Some of us, every year, you move from here to there. Some of us, every year, you move three times, five times, six times. You are a wanderer. You are under a case. Check the foundation of that case. Cases cannot settle on you unless you deserve it. Tell your neighbor, nobody can curse you can unless you open the door. Cases cannot settle on you unless you deserve it. There is no case stronger than any other case that it can just come and sit on you because you did evil. Cases is like birds. A bird fly. When it lands on the tree, it means he has business with that tree. And when curses come on you, check your life. 
Stop blaming witches and wizards. Stop blaming uh, this and that. Check yourself first. Cain shed blood. Adam obey wrong voice. This is where many people take advantage and say, don't listen to your wife. Remember Abraham was case. No way, it's not like that. If your wife is filled with the Holy Spirit and is telling you the right things you say, and the Bible says, God said to her, why did you listen? No way, it's not like that. When your wife is misleading you, then uh, you know you can say no. But if he's telling you the correct things, your heart can witness, say yes, I have to correct this situation. Let me hear all the sisters say amen, loud and clear. Amen. It's like only two sisters I have in this church here. Jeremiah, chapter 22, verse 29. Oh, land, 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 hear the word of the Lord. The land of ears to hear. You walk on the ground, very good, but remember it can hear. There is a lot of things the land can do. The land has a mouth. It can speak, it can swallow, it can vomit. And it becomes very dangerous when the land vomits you. The land can hear the word of the Lord. Now, verse 30 of Jeremiah chapter 22. The land must hear the word of God, but this is what will happen. Read with me if you can. This is what the Lord say. Recall this man as if childless. A man who will not prosper in his lifetime. For no one of his children will prosper. No one will sit on the throne of David or rule anymore in Judah. What do you learn here? This is a generational case. They could put this case on this king. This king slapped the prophet. And the prophet did not respond there. He went in his altar and released those cases. Oh, land, land, land. Hear the word of the Lord. Record this man as if childless. So a man that will never... Record this man as if childless. That means if you have children, all the children, will, what will happen to them? They will die. What will happen to his children if they don't die? Not one of them will prosper. Not one of them will sit on the throne to rule. Record this man as if childless, a man who will not prosper in his lifetime. Check the family where you are coming from. What do they do? I believe you know your family better than anybody else here. And uh, you've discovered that there are some uh, idol priests. They are traditional healer. They are musician. They are sangoma. They are inyanga. Don't take your life don't take the situation that you are going through lightly. Engage now. That priest of Satan in your family is business with every one of you. He will not come and ask you for permission to do his stuff. You as born again, you are a priest. You are also a king. Where the word of the king is, there is power. So you don't speak like a baby. Speak like a king. You give instruction. There are cases that are very, very dangerous. When you're talking about breaking generational cases, you must think twice. Land, land, land. Hear the word of the Lord. Record this man as if childless, a man who will not prosper in his lifetime. Not one of them will sit on the throne and rule. His children, what will happen to his children? His children will not prosper. There are people, no matter what they are doing, mm. no prosperity, 
If it comes, it disappears quickly, like a smoke. I will help you. The Spirit of God will open your mind. Those cases will break today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. If they are barren in your house, barrenness have come to an end. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, your mental barrenness have come to an end. Yeah. Your financial barrenness have come to an end. Yeah. Barrenness of the womb have come to an end. Yeah. Any kind of barrenness that they may put in place, Barrenness, they will say to you, Panado cure headache. Is it not so? And you take Panado, the headache is still there. Will you not wonder? That means the Panado was barren. <laughs> the things that must help you is not helping you. I see you free today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Receive your freedom today. Hallelujah. Amen. I know that when your car is, is broken, you go quickly to the mechanic to fix your car. Amen. But most of the time they don't fix your car. They just take a spare part and replace it. They say to you, your car is fixed. He did not fix anything. He just took another part and put it there. The one who created your body have a spare part of your body. Amen. I will repeat. The one who created you have a spare part of your body. Amen. If mankind knows that this car will break any time, so we must have another spare part. So when it's a problem, we will replace. God in heaven, who gave mankind that knowledge and wisdom, what about himself in heaven? Every damage in your body have come to an end in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive new organ in your body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Generational cases in your father's family, in your mother's family, all and hear the word of the Lord. They will never prosper again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Today, the land will record you as a successful man. Amen. The land will record you as a successful woman. Amen. All your children will be successful and prosper in the land of the living. Amen. Generational cases have come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I have a few things to tell you about the land. Oh, land, record this man as if childless. I want you to stand up on your feet and say, Oh, land, record me as a successful man. Oh, land, record me as a successful man. You will raise your voice. You will point your finger in the ground. Land, land, land. Record me as a successful man. You women say as a successful what? Amen. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rikobo Soko Maria Kabasakama. Hakaba Saya Bahia Kabo Sakoma. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Sit down. I'm sorry for those that have come for the very first time. Here I work with my people. I'm not raising up followers, I told you. Take this message, take it to somebody else. You will help them big time. You will sound like Prophet Elijah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let me tell you the truth and the truth shall make you free. From the book of John, chapter 8, verse 3. The teacher of the law and the Pharisee brought a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses, in the law Moses commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. Jesus don't despise anybody's question. Jesus 
bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. What was he writing? Hmm. They kept on questioning him. He strengthened up and said to them, let any of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. My Bible says, everyone began to leave the place, beginning from the adult to the young people, because of what Jesus was writing on the ground. There are things that is written in the sky of the city where you are living. There are also things that is written on the ground in the land where you are living. Who wrote those things? If Jesus could write something on the ground that chased people away, be careful. You will stand up on your feet. I paralyze any evil hand that writes generational curses in my father's family, in my mother's family, in the house where I'm living. Whatever they wrote in the sky, in the city where I'm living, disappear by the blood of Jesus. Whatever they wrote on the ground that make me to struggle in this land, disappear by the blood of Jesus. Disappear, disappear, disappear. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rakabo soko Maria Kaba. Maskaya Maria Kaba sekema. Rokoma Sakaya Maria Kaba. Maseke Maria Bo Sokoma. Ha! Kaya Masakama. Whatsoever they've written on the ground, in any graveyard. Ria Kama Sekema Rakaba disappear. Rikabo Sokoma Rikaba Sababa. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, my father. Ria Bosokoya Maria Kaba Sekem. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Mare Kaba Sakaya Baria Kaba. Name, pray. Amen. Many people understand this. Many people don't understand it. Somebody may say to you, they will cross the line on the ground. Where? They say, pass. Let's see. Do you still remember those things? Amen. Today, that limitation over your life and your family is broken. Amen. You are crossing over in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That which was impossible has become possible now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus wrote on the ground. Everybody, today, children of God are not strong. I never heard any relevant message about Jesus writing on the ground. We're still blaming the woman, and we're still praising the woman that was committing adultery, but there were a lot of signification when Jesus was writing on the ground. My friend, there are books where your name has been recorded. Magic book, black book, book of suffering, book of sorrow. I set them all on fire in the name of Jesus. Christ. Amen. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost consume them in the name of Jesus. Christ. Amen. Amen. Anywhere your name has been taken in any kingdom, in any shrine, in any covenant, fire consume them in the name of Jesus. Fire destroy them in the name of Jesus. I see you free in the name of Jesus. The capture of the martyr shall be taken away. The prayer of the terrible shall be delivered. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please, you may sit down. Hallelujah. Let somebody say, Enough is enough. I must, I must be free from any kind of generational cases. Kind of In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Generational cases. 
I love, I had a lot of preaching on generational cases, but it never satisfied me until I asked God, show me, show me, Lord, what is this thing, generational cases? Why not generational blessing? Because when you bless Abraham, we can witness generational blessings. From today, your eyes will see the defeat of all your enemy in the name of Jesus. You will see generational blessing upon generational blessing. He's starting with you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to know that uh, the city of Jericho was cursed by Joshua. And uh, I will talk about it, but listen to this. Second King chapter 2, verse 19. The people of the city said to Elisha, Look, our Lord, this town is well situated. Our town is in a very good spot, very, very good position, as you can see. But the water is bad, and the land is unproductive. You and me, we saw from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 10, that God called the city, ground the land, and gathered the water, and called the sea. And God saw that it was good. Why this problem in the city of Jericho? Somebody cursed Jericho. And it was not an empty vessel. It was Joshua. There are a few lessons we need to learn here. Be very careful now. This is what will make... Senses when you are breaking generational cases. There are a few things I want you to consider. Number one, when Joshua cursed Jericho, what did he say? What happened to Joshua? Joshua chapter 6, let us start from verse 26 and 27. Joshua chapter 6, read with me if you can. At that time, Joshua pronounced this solemn oath. Stop, stop, stop. I don't like it the way you are reading. If I do the reading, I'm the one benefiting. Because the word of God is living and active. It's work for me. When you do the reading, it will also do the same things. The word of God is living and active. Whatever you are saying there will begin to work inside you, outside you. That's why I want you to read with me. Amen. Go ahead, loud and clear. At that time, Joshua pronounced this solemn oath. Case before the Lord is the one who undertake to rebuild this city, Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he will lay its foundation. At the cost of his youngest, he will set up its gate. Verse 27. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his name spread throughout the land. The Lord was with Joshua. Be careful when the Lord is with somebody and that fellow curses you. Beat your chest. Say, the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. My persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be totally disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord was with Joshua and cursed Jericho. Hallelujah. When Joshua cursed Jericho, a wise man will ask, which year was that? What was the year Joshua pronounced cases on Jericho? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. What was the year Joshua cursed Jericho? The 45 city was destroyed in the late Bronze Age, about 1,400 before Christ. When Joshua cursed Jericho, it was 
at the late Bronze Age, about 1,400 before Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Read with me from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 16, verse 34. When did Jericho get rebuilt? Joshua already prophesied. Joshua already cares. He said, a person that will rebuild Jericho, his firstborn son will die. When he's starting to build, his firstborn son will die. When he finished building Jericho, his second son will die. My Bible says, read with me, if you can. In Ahab time, year of battle, rebuild Jericho. He lay its foundation at the cost of his firstborn son, Abiram. And he set it at the cost of his younger son, Segub. In accordance with the word of the Lord spoken by Joshua, son of Nun, cases Joshua pronounced came to pass after how many years? After how many years? That is a, what the wise person will ask. After 500 good years. After how many years? 500 good years. Check, how many years do we live in the land of the living today? Nobody also is praying a prayer, Father, uh, kill me when I'm 100. No. When they begin to get into their 80, they say, Father, take me anytime. When I sleep, I just go. That's the prayer of many people. Hallelujah. Amen. Because your body becomes tired, your body becomes useless, there is no use for it, and the person is praying, God, when are you taking me? Uh, while the other person uh, is praying, Father, give me long life. You cannot change those opinions. 500 good years. How do you call it? Generational cases or not? The first generation come, 100 years is one generation, and the next year is 100 generation. Every five generation labor under these cases of Joshua. The time from the time Joshua cursed the land up to the time of year, 500 good years. That is why the person that is breaking curses must know the business. If he doesn't know the business, you will be making a lot of noise. I believe you've seen many demons manifesting again and again, and then you wonder why. My friend, they are family that belong to the devil. Now, you force yourself to belong to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it will take a fight. It will take what? Who told the Israelites you will leave this place? God told Moses, take my people out of Egypt, go in the promised land. But how many years do they take? Did God say to Moses, you will take 40 good years to leave this place and go to the promised land? No. Why do they have to spend 40 good years? Today, if you want to go to Israel, I believe uh, from South Africa, it takes you one day. One day, the next day you are there. But if you look at, in the map, Egypt and Israel, when you fly, is 25 minutes. 25 to 30 minutes. That's all. Why people have to spend so a lot of time? God wants to renew the mind of people. It's not easy to say to generational cases, break. But when you understand the business, it becomes very easy. Why? Because our God is the ancient of days. Is the Alpha, is the Omega. No matter the name of the years, by the blood of Jesus, generational cases in your life is broken. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. What a privilege we have today with the blood of Jesus. Take advantage on the blood of Jesus. It speaks better word. Hallelujah. Now, better uh, yell. The priest of Bethel, Yale of Bethel. It cost his firstborn son. The firstborn son died. The secondborn died. This is not good news. And nobody dared to rebuild the city of Jericho. And the case continued. Elijah was around. They dispatched Elijah. He could stop that case quickly. 
Praise God. People continue to praise the Lord from Jericho. They continue. Je, uh, Elijah had uh, some students from Jericho, children of prophets. They were prophets. They came to receive lessons from Elijah. They were not very close. They were not so attached to Elijah, but the person that was so attached to Elijah was Elisha, saving Elijah. The day Elijah asked him, what do you want me to do? I must be taken away from you. He said, give me a double portion of the spirit that you have. He said, well, <laughs> that's very hard. To me, it's very hard, but if you see me going, it will be yours. Today, your eyes will see the way generational cases break in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. The man left. The mantle fall. He cried, my father, my father. He saw the mantle falling. He just took the garment. The one that he had, he tore it. Because the job of that business was over. He tore his garment. Put the one of Elijah. Strike the water with it. The water was divided. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? The water was divided. He crossed over. The sons of the prophet said, the spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. You don't buy the spirit of God with money. Your service qualifies you for the anointing. You have refused to serve the Lord. You are serving the Lord anyhow, the way you want. Be very careful. You're still a big empty vessel and it's very dangerous. Serve the Lord with everything you have. One day you will be rewarded. The love of Elisha just changed by collecting the mantle of Elijah. His love changed. The spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. This time they did not come to him like a friend. He was their friend. They bow low. They say, Lord, look at our land, Jericho. Jericho, by the way, is the first capital, the first city in the world, Jericho. The first city in the world. The problem with Jericho was the way moon worshippers Somebody may ask, why Joshua have to curse Jericho? They were moon worshippers. God dislike idol worship, big time. I thank God for his word that say the idol will totally disappear. The ass of the arrogant will be humble. The proud of man both low. The Lord Jesus Christ alone will be exalted. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 18. The idol will totally disappear. Check the way. Jericho was reduced to nothing. It was case. Praise the Lord. Elisha. They acknowledge Elisha as a man that have the anointing to stop the cases that has been upon Jericho for many, many, many years. Now, 500 from uh, Joshua to Yel, 500 years. From Yel to, to Elisha, how many years? How many years? Why, nobody could, why the politician of Jericho could not remove the case in the land and in the water? Hmm? Listen to me carefully. When God loves you, you will raise up men of God around you. You despise the men of God, there will be no blessing coming to you. You remain with your trouble. And yet, God has business to raise up his men to almost every city to redeem the land and the people. Praise the Lord. Elisha. Elisha began to serve the Lord from 892 before Christ. 
Elisha began to serve the Lord for 892 before Christ. Remember, this happened just after receiving the anointing of Elijah. He went to remove cases on Jericho. How did you do it? Second King chapter 2, verse 20. Second King chapter 2, verse 20. Read with me if you can. Bring me a new bowl. He said, put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Verse 21. Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into it, saying, this is what the Lord says. I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. Okay. Listen to me carefully. I want you to understand this. A man of God called me and said, Daddy, how do you use salt to break cases? I said, I don't use salt. I never heard from God telling me, she could use salt. I only do what I hear from God. I don't use salt. He said to me, me, I use salt. God move powerfully. I said, praise the Lord. You need to understand the meaning of that. This man wants to initiate me to something that is not in the plan of God concerning my life. Not only this boy, but a couple of people came to ask me, I have my salt. Can you pray that uh, when I break the case, it will break? I said, I'm sorry. I never heard anything about salt. I saw it in the Bible. Elijah used it, and it worked for him. Praise the Lord. Amen. My main goal is put the scripture back. Put the scripture back. What did he say? I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. What is that? The word of God. Amen. Sometimes I do use things that God has told me to use. I do use things to break cases. But now, in the land of Jericho, you need to understand these people are idol worshippers. If Elijah just say, if Elisha just say, I've healed this water, never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. They will shake their head. They say, oh, we know that he must give us something. And without using anything, nothing will happen here. This will take me to where the Bible says, the Lord said to Moses, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders I've given you the power to do. Hallelujah. Amen. You can take anything, handkerchief, you wave it, you say, generational cases, I blow you away. What will happen? Generational cases will be blown away. You can take the anointing oil, spread on the ground of your property, the generational cases in the ground of my property, you shall ex manifest in this place no more. Expire. What will happen? It will expire. You can take water. You say, Spirit of God, move in this water. Break the generational cases. It will break. You can say also, I'm using salt, the way Elisha used salt. That will work according to your faith. Did you hear what I just said now? Amen. In the book of Mark chapter 6, Mark chapter 6, let us take it from verse 7. Mark chapter 6, verse 7. Read with me if you can. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over, over what? You know, when God called the twelve, said with me, Judas Iscariot was there. Thomas was there. Are you with me? Somebody like Thomas, when you say, I give you authority over unclean spirit, Thomas will stretch his hand. Thank you for giving us power. Where is it now? I'm waiting. 
Go to verse 12. Mark chapter 6, verse 12. Read with me if you can. They went out and preached that people should repent. Who's that? The 12. Are you with me? Verse 13. Verse 13. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick with the... They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with all and healed them. Who gave them the anointing oil? Say it louder. Jesus. Who gave them the anointing oil? Jesus. Why? The anointing oil is power against unclean spirits. Anointing all drive out demons. Anointing all heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Do you think that there are also demons of generational cases? Huh? If you believe that, wave your hand, let me see. Do you believe that the, every generational case is supported by demons? Do you think that the anointing all can drive them out? That is what will happen to you today. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Jesus gave his disciple power against unclean spirit in the form of liquid. Anointing all. Anointing all is the messenger of the covenant. The refiner's fire. Londra soap. It was not in my program, but... The Lord is telling me, today, generational cases in many lives will break. Amen. By the Spirit of the Lord in the anointing all. That generational sickness in your body will disappear today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Did we learn something today? Amen. Close your eyes by your head. You are here. You say, Apostle, pray for me. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Raise your hand right where you are. Jesus is here. He will see your hand. Your life will never be the same. There are things that have to change in your life now. Jesus is the only one that says, come to me, all you are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. Are you not tired of laboring under generational cases? Things that you did not do. Things that you are a complete innocent. You just met it in the family. In your family, people have sugar diabetes. And it's going from generation to generation. High blood pressure. It's going from generation to generation. Jesus said, come to me, all you are wearing bed, and I will give you rest. Jesus can put a stop to all those generational problems when you enter into a covenant with him. Hand over your life to Jesus. Just raise your hand and say, I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Push your hand up anywhere you are. Wonderful. Now, Everybody, you will put your right hand on your chest and say this with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, come to you as a I come to you as a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. Forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Save, my life. Save my life. Write my name in the book of eternal life. As from today, I'm born into the family of God. I'm born again. Amen. Amen. You've done well to give your love to Jesus. Please go with the fellow that lay hand on you, the person that came to assist you. They will tell you two or three things, then you will come back. I will be waiting for you before we step into the realm of deliverance against generational cases. Amen.